Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Carol Naito with the Puget Sound Regional Council, and I'd like to welcome you all and thank you for joining us for the first in um, a series of two census workshops that PSRC is hosting for our membership in partnership with the Census Bureau. It's great to see so many of you here with us, and I hope that you're going to find today's webinar uh, materials helpful and informative, uh, both in general as well as more specifically to equip many of you as planners with data resources and knowledge to support your local planning work, um, including the comprehensive plan updates that many of you have begun or will be soon starting to launch. Um, I'd like to start by introducing you to our presenter, Leah Bolden from the Census Bureau's regional office based in Los Angeles that covers the Western region, including Washington state. Um, we're so lucky to have Leah with us. She's super familiar with the topics that are going to be covered in today's session, which include um, the 2020 decennial census and, um, and census uh, data products that are out um, or on their way out. Um, new privacy or respondent disclosure avoidance protections that were instituted as a, as a part of the 2020 census, the American Community Survey, as well as an overview of the Census Bureau's data portal, data.census.gov. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to a couple of key PSRC staff supporting today's webinar. Um, Eric Klute is an assistant planner in our data department who joined us in January to lead our census and housing data work. He's stepping into the role formerly held by Neil Kilgrin, who after decades of overseeing our census work program retired earlier this spring. Um, Neil left some big shoes to fill and Eric has been doing a great job of absorbing all the details and technical minutia involved in managing this very core piece of PSRC's data work program. And Kristen Mitchell is our esteemed administrative assistant who together with Eric is going to be on hand to field your questions, particularly any technical issues you may be experiencing. So that leaves just a few housekeeping details for me to go over before we get started. First, we want to let participants know that this webinar is being recorded and that the recording is going to be posted on our website for the general public to access. A link to the recording will be shared with anyone who's registered for this event. Um, second, if participants should have questions for Leah along the way, you can use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. Eric is going to field your questions and pose them to Leah at the end of each webinar segment. Um, and in the event there are too many questions to be answered during those Q&A periods, we'll make every attempt to follow up with you afterwards. Um, please also note that the chat box has not been enabled for today's webinar, so the Q&A function is the sole way to communicate with us during the proceedings. And lastly, if you are having any technical difficulties, please use that Q&A box uh, to reach out to us for, assist for assistance and we will try and help you um, uh, to get uh, to, to be able to join on board. So that wraps up my kickoff introductions and comments. Thank you again for joining us. And I'm now going to turn things over to Leah to get today's program going. Thank you so much, uh, Carol, for uh, just, you know, the great introduction. I want to thank all of you for joining the webinar today. And a big shout out to the uh, Puget Sound uh, Regional Council leadership for hosting uh, this webinar today. It's sharing with your team that the last time I gave a formal presentation uh, to um, the Puget Sound Regional Council it was in 2016. My goodness, it was November 2016. So it's been a few years. Uh, so it's really good to you know be back uh, with you all uh, today. Today we're going to be covering, as uh, Carol mentioned, I'm, I'll be providing some Census Bureau updates uh, as well as going into uh, data.census.gov, our, our primary extraction tool. So I'll have some exercises that I will be uh, going uh, over with you uh, during the latter part of our segment. So as Carol mentioned, I've, you know, I've been with the Census Bureau for, uh, my goodness, over 20 years now. And I've been a data dissemination specialist, partnership coordinator uh, in partnership, which is where I started years ago. My background includes consulting uh, and you know, facilitation. I'm co-manager of a consulting firm, which my husband uh, still runs to this day. And I um, am you know, just excited to you know, be a part of uh, the Census Bureau. And I should just say to you that uh, I am going to be retiring uh, at the end of June. 
Uh, so what's what's significant is my next slide. As so we always want to give you a place uh, to go to, we have over uh, 32 uh, what we call data dissemination specialists across the nation. Uh, they are hiring more uh, as we speak. Uh, so there's you know definitely going to be a larger team uh, to facilitate these sessions. Uh, but one of the things I, I want you to know about, if you don't already, is we have um, this great portal. It's, it's called Census Academy. Uh, it's a hub where you can get digital content. Uh, we bring the experts to you, meaning there's uh, what we call there's webinars, ongoing webinars. There's at least a few webinars going on each week. There's uh, also courses. Um, that you that you can go in and, and and purview. There's one. Their newest one has to do with you know extracting data from the API, and so they're and, it, and they're usually cut into different start uh, small modules, which is great. So you know, so it's a great time to you know just go ahead and you know take part in in our sessions. Another thing you can also you know what we call data queries. After this session, you may have a question you know, specific to your project. You know, to specific to a, a geography or, or some or some data piece that you're not able to find. Uh, you can go ahead and right here on the on the corner here, census.askdata at census.gov. You can leave an email and they will forward it to the appropriate data dissemination specialist. And then we are really good at getting back to you normally you know, with, within 24 hours, or you can call the 1-844-ASK-DATA. So my point is, is, you know, help is available. This is not the end of the road. We have a lot of content. We have a lot of programs and you may need some support uh, one of these days. So just know that that's going to be your go-to. Um, website, email, phone number, okay? So help is always available for you for your data needs. So what are we gonna cover today? I'm gonna go through a, you know, census data overview, and it's a pretty quick overview. I'm talking really just about one slide. Uh, we'll talk about 2020 census products, and I'm gonna start with just briefly, just, just a couple of slides on redistricting. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about apportionment, uh, but we'll talk about redistricting and some of the data products that are available now. I'm going to um, talk about disclosure avoidance and differential privacy, and it's going to be a 101 session, very, very elementary, basic but still sounds, may sound, sound a little complex uh, to many of you. Uh, but I want to just point out there's going to be other places to go uh, if you want more information about, you know, this new modern uh, disclosure avoidance technique that we call differential privacy. Then we're going to bridge into other 2020 census products uh, that are, you know, impacted by differential privacy and then move into the American Community Survey, specifically talking about the five-year, uh, the 2016-2020, and then I'm going to go into data.census.gov, give you a few tips or tricks in terms of search strategy, and then we're going to you know, go in and do a, a live demo. So as Carol mentioned, I'm probably going to stop after you know, a couple of places uh, in content here to ask if you have any questions. And uh, so you, that way we don't just have a flood of questions at the end. All right, so that's how this, the day is going to go. Uh, depending on how much time we have, once I complete kind of the formal contact, content, then we may, you know, take a five-minute break if, we, if necessary uh, before I go into the live demo. It depends on where we are at that point. All right, so census data in overview. If you've ever been to any of our webinars online in person I mean, you have you already have a, you know, a sense of you know what the census bureau offers we are one of the largest of uh, federal government statistical agencies we actually are one of a uh, 17 and we're best known for the decennial census that happens you know of course every decade decennial we completed the 2020 census. You know, it's widely advertised. It's we, have, we hired you know millions of people uh, you know to do that count, or hundreds of thousands of people, maybe not necessarily be millions. And it's so it's just something you know about. You know, it's been in the news, so forth and so on. There's, uh, however, um, we, we, we're, we do over 130 surveys. Some of you may or may not know that 60 of them are are economic surveys and the, and the rest are, are you know housing or population surveys 
The largest one is the American Community Survey. And it is uh, the one that we tend to use uh, when we're looking for trend data, uh, when we're looking for what we call characteristic data, whether that's socioeconomic, uh, demographic, or housing. And so that tends to be the data set that we're referring to uh, when we are, are pulling data in between the decennial years. And of course, there's the economic census, which is the official count of American businesses. And, and we do that a particular census in years ending in two and seven. Uh, so 2022, uh, at the end of this year, they're going to be you know, starting, uh, starting to do the economic census. So and at the bottom here, and you will be receiving a copy of this PowerPoint presentation or the Puget Sound Regional Council will you know, have it on their, on their uh, website, uh, but you're also able to have links to our, our surveys and to get more information about the many surveys that we will be uh, going through. On June 22nd, I'll come back and we'll talk about the, house, the Household Pulse Survey and the business dynamic statistics, uh, as well as some of our other tools. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at some of those surveys on June 22nd. Okay, so 2020 census data. What can I say about the 2020 census data? One thing is we did you know, um, complete the apportionment data. And uh, so many of you, we saw that, you know, we, we saw how, um, we, how we, in, in this case in California, lost the seat. Uh, and you know, how places like Texas and Florida gained seats. The reapportionment of, uh, of congressional seats based on the 2020 census data. So that, that has been released. Uh, the, other, the other data set uh, that many of you have worked with or are working on or, or, or still you know, want to go ahead and retrieve data about, uh, we had the redistricting data. And the redistricting data uh, you know, is, is really the information, uh, the counts that we give to states and then allows them to redraw or redistrict their legislative boundaries. And the power of census data, as distinct from you know, American Community Survey, is that you are able to get data at what we call a block level. So block level is the smallest geographic level upon which the Census Bureau publishes data. And so this data uh, typically are in these different categories. So there's data published for race, ethnicity, Ethnicity is defined as Hispanic or, Lat or, or, or Latino origin or not Hispanic or Latino origin uh, as mandated by the Office of Management and Budget that sets the policy on race. Uh, there's the voting age population over 18, and then there's housing occupancy status, um, as well as group quarters population. So that data was released on data.census.gov uh, on September 16th. And there's a host of information on our website uh, located under either 2020 uh, census results or this 2020 census products. And uh, so there's you know, lots of resources for you. Sometimes I may get a question, a data query when someone says, OK, well, let's see, the 2020 census data came out, Leah. Um, do you, you have any information on education? So I, I have to let them know that when you look at number one, what's currently been out is the redistricting data. So this is what we have so far. And what is contained within those six tables are one, these are some, you know, these are actual names. So if you're gonna go in and pull data on data.census.gov, so P1 would stand for race. Okay, then P2 was Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino by race. And then there's the race for the population 18 years and over, the voting age population. And then P4 is Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino by race for the population 18 years and over. There's group quarters population by major group quarters type. And then there's occupancy status. So why P1 and P2 and P3 and P4? So I don't have a slide in here uh, that discusses, you know, how we define race and ethnicity. There are many, presentations upcoming or online right now uh, in Census Academy where we actually talk about that in more detail. But I think the key is here, so Hispanic or Latino, somebody of Hispanic or Latino origin can be of any race. Okay, so, so, so P2, for example, uh, will give, um, you know, race, you know, uh, you know, black, white, Asian, and 
the, uh, his, in Hispanic or Latino is separated out, disaggregated out. So that's kind of the, the difference between uh, the two tables. So if I just want race, which is inclusive of ethnicity, that's P1. If I want to have race uh, and ethnicity as, as, two, as two separate um, data points, then you're looking at P2. Okay, so that's more on that, but that, that, I think that's the main stipulation on redistricting data. And of course, that's available on data.census.gov now. All right, so I'm uh, going to go into uh, disclosure avoidance uh, 101 at this point. And I want to thank you for a chance to actually talk about disclosure avoidance. I, I haven't had an opportunity where um, I have uh, had any of my uh, customers want to know about it. Um, those that want to know will probably attend uh, Michael Hall's uh, detailed uh, webinars that are going on at least at least monthly. So let's but let's talk. It's an important concept um, as we look at the 2020 uh, census. So one of the things uh, you all know is the Census Bureau, you know, has uh, a long history of upholding, you know, confidentiality and privacy. It's a well-known fact that that really is one of our, our mandates. And it's important uh, because it's, it's, it's critical it's because it's the only way that we can continue to collect data uh, by is having the confidence, you know, of the public, of the respondent, that we're going to keep their data uh, private. So we are, you know, again, the largest statistical agency. Uh, we are mandated by the Constitution uh, to, um, by law, Title 13. Uh, these are some legal requirements that we have to uphold, um, you know, these privacy protections. And it's a core of our, our institutional uh, culture. So that's kind of the backbone of, of what we do. And that commitment is driving uh, all of our work as it relates to any um, disclosure avoidance techniques. So, but there has been, you know, a privacy challenge uh, over in the, the particularly the last decade, but probably a few decades. One of the things that we know uh, is uh, every time you release any, any statistic that's calculated from a, a data source, um, you know, you leak a small amount of private information. And if you release too many statistics too accurately, you will eventually reveal the entire underlying confidential data source. And so that's sourced by um, I'm not revealing information while preserving privacy. This is a, uh, a source of June 9th, um, 20, 2003 in San Diego. Okay, so, so this is an um, important element here. So the privacy challenge is releasing data, too much data, and you can reveal the source. Now we're gonna couple that with what? Um, there's more data, more, more uh, data and faster computers. Uh, we, we're in today's digital age. There's been a proliferation of databases that could potentially be used to attempt and undermine the the privacy protections of our statistical uh, data products. You couple that with today's computers, you know, being able to perform complex large scale calculations with increasing ease. So these two parallel trends, you know, the databases and computers able to perform complex large scale calculations, you know, they, they pose new threats to our ability here at the Census Bureau to safeguard uh, respondents uh, data. So that's basically our, our challenge here. And there I pointed here on there's a disclosure avoidance for the 2020 census. Uh, there is a, a PDF that um, Census Bureau has created. It's about 43 pages long. Uh, so again, it, it walks through in fine detail and on the basis of disclosure avoidance. So that you'll receive that if you really want to read you know, more about it. In terms of you know what has happened over the time uh, where we census bureau you know, had to take um, more steps uh, and modernize our our systems so what are some of the you know disclosure avoidance techniques that that um, are are being used have been used that are commonly used 
and the question also becomes, you know, how do we protect privacy in, in um, a public data release? So historically, there's been disclosure avoidance, or another term is statistical, statistical avoidance limitation. We can do a, a number of different things. Techniques involve what? Um, reducing precision, you know, removing vulnerable records or adding uncertainty. And the, the, the point of these methods is to make reconstruction and re-identification more difficult. Some commonly used methods uh, include, you know, complementary suppression of cells and records, you know, rounding published statistics, you know, top bottom, bottom coding of extreme values, you know, sample larger populations, swap records like we did for the 2010 census, uh, which is a form of noise injection. So for the 2020 census, the Census Bureau has adopted uh, differential privacy. And what is that? So differential privacy is a mathematical technique that provides for the formal quantification of the risk of data disclosure and protect privacy by infusing noise derived from specific statistical distributions into the data. Wow, that's a mouthful. Important though. Uh, and Michael Halls, you know, has again a number of different webinars re relating to that. And so his his context is this. You know, he looks at disclosure, this differential privacy as a form of disclosure avoidance uh, method is it's really a framework uh, for defining and quantifying um, privacy protection. Uh, so the context being that every individual that is reflected in a particular statistic contributes towards that statistics value. Every statistic that you publish leaks a small amount of private information. So differential privacy as a framework allows you to assess each individual's contribution to that statistic and to measure and thus limit how much information about them will leak. When you can combine differential privacy uh, with, with noise injection, differential privacy allows you to precisely control the balance of private information leakage uh, in your published statistics. The value being for differential privacy is that it's uh, said infinitely tunable. So these parameters, these dials can be set anywhere from perfect privacy to perfect accuracy. Um, this privacy guarantee is mathematically provable and, and future proof. The precise calibration of statistical noise enables optimal data accuracy for any given level of privacy uh, protection. So what is that continuum? So the only way you know, to absolutely eliminate all risk of re-identification would be to never release any usable data. That's not an option. Differential privacy allows you to quantify a precise level of acceptable risk and to precisely, precisely calibrate where on the privacy accuracy spectrum the resulting data will be. So what the Census Bureau, so what this disclosure avoidance technique does, private, um, differential privacy is establishes what we call a privacy loss budget. It establishes a privacy loss budget. So this approach is to identify where that optimal balance is between those extremes of privacy and accuracy. That point on the spectrum can be known as your privacy loss budget. And you'll often see the privacy loss budget abbreviated as PLB or represented by the Greek uh, letter uh, epsilon. And then much like a monetary budget, the lower your privacy loss budget, the less privacy you, will, you are willing to give up in return for accuracy. A privacy loss budget of zero would be the world of perfect privacy, but completing completely useless data. 
and an epsilon of affinity would be the per world of perfect data with no privacy protections at all. Privacy loss budget, you're going to hear that a lot in any subsequent uh, webinar that you attend, um, you know, with, uh, with Michael Hawes uh, and their team. Uh, so what, what has come out of this, this modernization method is that the Census Bureau has set up uh, there, there's called the Data Stewardship Executive Policy Committee, and they make uh, all the decisions uh, as, as it relates uh, to uh, what the privacy loss budget allocation is for each particular data set that we release. And <clears throat> so there was, you know, there's a webinar you can, you can view now if you wish on the public law 94-171 redistricting data. Uh, because, yeah, the privacy loss budget allocation was uh, a, a part of um, that data release. It did not impact uh, the apportionment data. Those were, you know, straight counts, uh, you know, for the apportionment of uh, congressional seats. It's going to impact our demographic and housing characteristic files. It's impacting all subsequent data products from the 2020 census. And this um, data Stewardship Executive Policy Committee, DIPSI, uh, will be deciding the, how to allocate across the different sets of tabulations within each data product by each geographic level and then by also each data element. So, so speaking on why it takes, it's taking a long time, it's, it takes a while to, to uh, incorporate this modern technique uh, into every single um, data product and also to seek public uh, input. So I want to just highlight that if you want to know more, a couple of things you can do. You can, you know, just go on our website and then type in, you know, disclosure avoidance. Uh, and there are additional webinars. There's, there's, you know, the PDF that I shared with you. There's also um, latest updates. So one of the things that the, the Census Bureau has decided to do, oops, I thought I have that there on the previous, okay, is they, we're, we're setting up, and you'll see that when I go through the data files, what we call these demonstration uh, products, demonstration data. So what they what they so what they do is they they apply the um, the privacy loss budget allocations um, to the 2010 census. So it's called really DOS. You know, hear it that way: disclosure avoidance system to the 2010 census. And so it, it allows um, side by side comparison of the impact of this this our new disclosure avoidance system slash differential privacy quantified by a uh, detailed summary metrics and this all this this demonstration data include the person and housing file so so that's part of it. they have this demonstration data and and then the dipsy the, the, the data stewardship executive executive policy committee um you know review that and then make make decisions about the allocation of the privacy loss budget across geography types and across particular data points. And then they ask for feedback. So there's, you know, feedback period and due dates. Uh, so that is part of the, you know, the, you know, the, the impact kind of this crowdsourcing that the Census Bureau is implementing uh, to view impact of, you know, this differential privacy via this DOS system, uh, you know, looking at 2010 uh, data, and getting input and then applying it uh, overall to the 2020 data set. So that's, um, there's, there's more to that. Every time there is a data release, we tend to have a, a webinar on it where you actually get the Census Bureau gurus uh, to talk more in detail about, um, about what they're doing uh, in terms of the privacy loss budget, how it impacts in terms of geographic levels, and how it will also impact uh, what particular data points are being impacted. Okay, so there's more on that if you if you wish to know um, more uh, detail. So that was um, okay. So that's privacy loss budget. So then there's the 2020 census products. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Maybe I can try to. Maybe I can take uh, you know questions now. 
if there are any, and um, then we can move to talking about the 2020 census products in terms of each particular file, what geographic level and possible release dates. Okay, so would this be a good time to take questions? Do we have any, Eric, at this point that I can try to answer? Okay, let's go. Yeah, uh, looks like one just popped in the, uh, the Q&A box. So if anyone has any more questions, please feel free to send it our way. But uh, Kristen asked, um, just wanting to confirm I understand, is the 2010 retroactively having the privacy process applied and will that data be re-released with this new policy? Okay. So this, so the, again, 2020 census is gone and done and over with. Okay, so we're, we're complete with 2010 census data. What they're, what they're uh, doing, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, going into a laboratory and using this historical data set um, the 2020 census data set and applying the, um, you know, the, the, the demonstration data, the, the privacy loss budget to the 2010 data to see the impact, uh, to, to see the impact on, on, you know, again, geographic levels, you know, and again, looking at accuracy versus privacy and um, in establishing, you know, what continuum, um, you know, will that data um, be released? So there's sort of, so what they're calling this is the demonstration data. Okay. Um, and so they create these files, people are able to review them. Dipsy then makes a decision on, you know, what, on, on what geographic levels can, are going to be, can be released and what uh, data variables can be released uh, at what geographic levels. Okay, yeah, so 2010 is done, nothing, nothing with that. This is just a way of going into a laboratory to test um, our, our, diff, our, dis, our the DOS, Disclosure Avoidance System, um, with, this, with, this, with, the, with the historical data set to see what kind of impact it could have on the 2020 census data set. Okay, all right. Good question, though. Yeah, no one can't make any retroactive changes. Uh, in 2010, we used um, swapping. You know, Carol knows this. We know we, we'd use data swapping. There's always historically been some disclosure avoidance uh, with any release of a, of, a, of a decennial census product. Okay, however, with the changes in terms of threats, you know, uh, com computer databases and all of that, the Census Bureau had to, you know, make it harder uh, for people to go ahead and, um, you know, this, you know, kind of recreate, um, you know, these new files with, with other information, third party uh, information. So, yeah, you know, um, again, you want to know more about it. There's, again, there's Michael Hawes, I mean, he's a guru, but he eats, sleeps with this stuff and it, he can speak in more detail. But yeah, I mean, it's, we, we you know, it's this, Census Bureau has to maintain confidentiality and privacy. So, uh, so this new modernized technique allows us to, um, you know, maintain that accuracy and privacy spectrum. So, so it's data that's usable, but not data that, that people could actually get and, and actually, you know, re-engineer and create new data sets. Okay. So any other questions, Eric? I don't see any others in the chat. Um, All right. So I, think, I think we're ready to continue. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, I, uh, I toyed with how much information to, get, to give you. Uh, all of this is uh, the 2020 census data products. And honestly, I don't know how many of you are, are still you know, waiting for 2020 census data. Many of you are. I'm surprised that, you know, people, they really want uh, the 2020 census again, because it's at the block level. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a data set that has been, that benchmarks, you know, um, a lot of other of uh, our data, our data sets. And it, you know, provides, you know, for example, the American Indian Alaskan Native tribes, uh, each, each decennial, they actually get full counts of 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 tribal um of, of tribal members i'm not of tribal affiliation people that have stated that they're a member of this tribe okay so um tribal affiliation okay so people are waiting uh, for these data sets 
there's been there's been changes, you know, based on public input. So I'm going to go through all of these. Uh, but um, from on the 2020 census pro data product update page, you know, you you will see uh, all of all of these particular files along with an associated date and that will get updated, you know, as it goes through that whole process of um, of the demonstration data and then and then making um getting input and then you know finally establishing that privacy loss budget for each file okay so they're, they're going through that now they're working through it here's the link right here so i will go through it i won't um try to read every part of it but every every file some some what i have found over the years is mainly what i need to know as a data user is you know what's what's on it i mean what what are the variables and two, what geographic level? So is, is this something that I could use uh, for, my, for my analysis? So the DP1, and any of you that worked with 2010 census or 2000 census, this was a very popular one. After every decennial, uh, we had the DP1. And so this one, this, this, so this, this file used to go down to lower levels of geography, but what is, what is on it? Um, so it gives you some, you know, your demographic and housing characteristics, and you you, you get the you know five-year age groups, you get sex, race, Hispanic, um, Latino origin, the you know, household type, relationship to householder, and let me turn this down here. <clears throat> uh, and, and then uh, you will the the geography that it will be released in, place level, which is a city or town. Uh, and we don't have minor civil divisions here. This tends to be on the East Coast. So, so for our for our purposes, you're looking at the place level. So for the cities in um, in Washington, you, you're going to be able to pull your demographic profile. And May 20 May 23 is the target date. Then the other file is called the demographic and housing characteristic file. Uh, many of you that were around. Uh, it's the 2010 census summary file, we call it the SF1. And uh, the beauty of the SF1 is that some of them are repeated by basic race and ethnicity. You get here your, here your subject areas. And again, we're looking at May 2023. So releasing the demographic profile plus the demographic and housing characteristic file in May of 2023. They have, they got a lot of input uh into uh <clears throat> you know some of the other releases and this is what we called um in the past this was like the summary file two where we actually had some we called the detail characteristics so it was a detailed demographic housing uh characteristic file i think it was the old summary file two and again is based on uh, data user feedback um, and of uh, the disclosure avoidance system they split it into three separate um, products. So one is um, it's called the uh, the detailed DHCA and detailed DHCB, and this is where we're getting some you know rich data uh, for detailed racial and ethnic groups, American Indian, Alaska Native tribes. Then there's a supplemental one that's going to DHC will provide characteristics about people within households. Okay, so the DH um, detailed DHA again. Uh, for those that want to look at population counts and sex by age, um, cross-tabulated for 370 detailed race and ethnic groups. Uh, so for the 2010 census, we had uh, the, the race category had changed slightly where we were able to, where we had white. And um, for example, people were able to write in, you know, in terms of um, you know, group, it could say German, Lebanese, Okay, uh, so there was, you know, more ability to actually do writing categories as distinct from just saying white. So now we're able to get those, to, formally we would have to get it in ACS, those ancestry groups that would help, help, help people determine um, their, their background, right? Um, and then 1,200 detailed American Indian, Alaska Native tribal and village population groups, such as Navajo Nation. So there is a 2020 census crosswalk uh, where you can get a sense of what those groups are. And again, um, the proposed just the proposed geographies are the following: uh, nation, state, county, American Indian, Alaskan, Native, uh, and Hawaiian uh, areas. 
And then they're still evaluating whether, you know, places and census tracts um, are going to be a part of this data file or not. So they're planning for that um, next summer, August 2023. And then there's um, the, the, this file B, D detail DHCB, again, um, house, more household information, household type and tenure uh, for the same groups and uh, American Indian, Alaska Native and village populations. Uh, let's see, and release date to be determined. And they're looking at um, 2020 census geographies. And as you see down to the county level, American Indian, Alaska Native uh, areas, Hawaiian areas. And then finally, there's a supplemental table, which reflects uh, complex relationships between the characteristics about households and the people living in them. Uh, these uh, characteristics will supplement the data about households and people available in the detailed H, uh, DHC product. So these are called complex person household join tables or join tables. And then some tables are repeated by race and ethnicity. And here's our geographic areas here and release date to be determined. Um, the beauty of everything is we're going to be able to get it on data.census.gov. All right. So these are uh, two uh, timelines that are located on the 2020 census site, product site. So, so again, um, as I explained, you know, there is a process uh, that the Census Bureau is undertaking. All right. So part of that is the demonstration data. Okay. So those it was going and in, went into different phases, uh, different rounds. And so it looks like there's a second round here uh, in August. And then, of course, the final production happens on 2023. All right. And so there is a place, there's a blog here. And then there's places where people can give feedback uh, on these files. All right. So these are available, um, you know, if you, uh, if you are interested in participating in that. Uh, and then the timeline for the, um, you know, the uh, detailed a DHC file A, same thing, uh, same time frame. Uh, we're looking at summer of 2023. Okay, so again, everything is going through this rigorous process of, um, you know, here prototype release and feedback. You know, DIPSI, the Data Stewardship Executive Policy Committee, uh, makes makes decisions. And they're the primary um, group decision group uh, that determines the, um, the allocation of privacy loss budget across geographic types and queries based on the analysis. All right, so that's that's pretty much it on the 20, uh, 20 other 2020 census products. I'll take questions on that now. Eric, are there any questions? Yes, uh, we've got one in the Q&A box here. I'll read it to you. Um, this is from Robin. If more people provide feedback on the demonstration data sets, will that affect the release date? Or does DSCP largely have what they need to apply DAS? They're looking for any possible way to speed up the, the release date. Oh. Wow. I can't, I can't speak for the, uh, the Data Stewardship Executive Policy Committee. Uh, it, it does sound like it has to go through the series of rounds. Uh, and, and get and get public input. So, you know, probably pretty much, I mean, typically when we, we give a date, it's it's pretty pretty close to that time frame. That's been my experience over time. Um, however, uh, once you know, once we once, for example, a webinar comes in, are you are you are you go ahead and you subscribe and you get updates uh, on the demonstration product on the disclosure avoidance? Um, you're able to get more more information about about timing. Um, you're also able to send uh, an email uh, to the disclosure avoidance team, uh, and you know they'll be more than happy to to let you know where they are and you know if there's any hope of it being released sooner. But good question. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on the uh, the other 2020 census products? I don't see any others in the chat or in the Q and A box. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. If there's any more, you know, feel free. We'll you know we'll I'll ask for some more questions at the end. Thanks, Eric. All right. Uh, so. I'm going to go through a few of the American Community Survey uh, um, slides uh, to, you know, just to give you an update of where we are. Okay. 
you know, as I shared uh, when I was just talking about the agenda, you know, the American Community Survey, you know, is, in my opinion, I mean, it's in terms of when I'm giving webinars on grant writing or, you know, um, or, or any of our other um, webinars that people are, are very, very interested in, you know, American Community Survey is pretty much, you know, where we're going because they do, they really do want characteristic data. So the American Community Survey, you know, is, um, you know, it really is the most current, reliable and accessible data source for local statistics um, as we look at, you know, planning, because it does have, topics, you know, when we're looking at age, you know, we're always looking at age variables, uh, you know, children, uh, veterans, commuting patterns, education, income, and employment. It's the largest survey uh, that the Census Bureau conducts, uh, 3.5 million addresses, and it definitely impacts, um, you know, federal government spending each year uh, as they begin to look at, you know, age, income, uh, that kind of data. It it's covers, you know, 40 key topics and supports 300 evidence-based federal government uses, 11 billion estimates each year. So there are three data sets that are released typically in each year. There's a one-year um, estimate, and these are for large populations and for geographies of 65,000 or more. There's a, a one-year supplemental estimate for smaller populations. So we're looking at, you know, populations of 20,000 or geographic areas with 20,000 or more. And then there's the five-year estimates, and these are for very small populations. And it's really for most, all geographies down to the census tracts and block groups. The American Community Survey just goes down to block group, does not go down to a block. <clears throat> So it's it's our pretty much our go-to our go-to data set. How is an American Community Survey different from the census? The first, you know, the census is the official count in the year 2020. So on April 1st, 2020, that's the official count. There's uh, it gives just some basic demographics. You know, we saw many of so we're just looking at kind of race, Hispanic origin, household composition, age, uh, gender, that kind of thing, right? Um, then you know, just totals. We're getting counts. Okay, every ten years is a point in time. Uh, that benchmark day is April first. So you know, very very distinct of, but it you know, it's it's a very important data set. Um, politically, uh, as well as, you know, benchmarking other data. Whereas the American Community Survey, if any of you were around in 2000, um, we actually had a short form and a long form. Every time we did a decennial census, there was a short form and the long form. Um, long form went to one out of every six housing units, and that was our characteristic data. In 2005, we decided, um, you know, based on public input and, and the world of change and people needing more in time, real time data, that uh, we would make um, American Community Survey an annual survey, okay, and then and took it out from the decennial. So the decennial census short form only, ACS be now becomes the sample, the sample estimate. Approximately one out of every 38 housing units are in sample. Uh, detailed social economic housing data, as I mentioned, and this is where we're getting trends. Uh, we're able to make comparisons. I mean, we're able to see through each different ACS data set some changes. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a one year. That's the, the 12 months of data and the 60, 60 months, 12 months and 60 months. That's the difference. We have we have an actually we actually have a. Um, an estimate and we actually have an official count. However, the American Community Survey is ongoing. The census is an official count for 2020. Uh, when we want to look at changes in population uh, over uh, each year, then we have to go to the population estimates program. Here's the content of the American Community Survey. Many of you are well aware uh, of of this content area. Uh, periodically, there's a review of our content. 
uh, you know, every single question, you know, has to go through a kind of a, a rigorous um, process. You know, it has to be some federal law, some some reason uh, that people really need this data. So, because we don't want to overburden, you know, our respondents. So it has to be um, a data variable that's important. So uh, many of you know, you know, if it, we had you know big year in 2020. 2020 was a big year for everywhere. The COVID um, pandemic impacted the uh, ACS uh, data collection operations in 2020, as it did the 2020 census. Now, for a period of time, many places were closed down. So given the limitations of our data collection uh, for the 2020 ACS, we were unable to collect information from certain segments of the population. As a result, uh, significant non-response bias was present in the collected data. While all surveys have non-response bias, you know, people don't want to respond. Um, our, our standard methods for mitigating the non-response bias were insufficient for the 2020 uh, ACS. Uh, you know, so as a result of that, you know, many people were disappointed, but we um, produced, um, in terms of, instead of our regular 2020 ACS one-year data, uh, we produced um, an AC, an one-year experimental data set uh, with uh, limited tables and tables um, uh, really for uh, st counties and, and state um, states, excuse me, and um, states and the nation. So that data um, is not available on data.census.gov the one year, uh, but you can find that on the American Community Survey uh, homepage. So and there's a great this, this is a great resource for you for you want it, for you that are pretty interested in you know the impacts of uh, on the ACS and what 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 kind of um, mitigating standards Census Bureau utilized. With every data release, we were going to provide you with with um, any kind of geographic changes, methodological changes, uh, changes in tables, uh, all of that is available to read more about, but I just wanted to just do a little highlight here. Uh, when you go for the 2016, and now I'm talking about the 2016, 2020 five-year data set, uh, most geographies, geographies will reflect the 2020 geographic boundaries, census tracts, <clears throat> and you know, <clears throat> block groups. Uh, but there are some some geographic changes that are still reflecting the 2010 uh, geographic boundaries and i'm going to update those later you see those here okay so for the zip code tabulation areas or zip does which are approximations of zip codes uh in 2021 so to the, at the end of this year uh we'll produce the 2021 typically the one year comes out in september the public use microdata areas, we're looking at 2020 uh, and in the urban rural definitions, the 2020 ACS release, uh, then we'll start, you know, seeing, um, you know, the, the reflections uh, that are different uh, for ACS. Here's some information on these bound geographic boundaries. Census Bureau does a great job of giving you the background and specific changes that have occurred. In terms of the population controls, the 2016-2020 ACS five-year estimates will use the vintage uh, 2020 um, post uh, census uh, estimates. And note here, the 2020 pop vintage is based on the 2010 census and was created without incorporation or consideration of the 2020 census results. So <clears throat> this is as a note, this it does under our technical documentation related to this particular data release. So here's some guidance. And we give guidance. This is not a nuance. I mean, we give guidance for every data release that comes out uh, because, of course, we always want to compare uh, one vintage uh, with another vintage. Um, and so we always have to you know, give some guidance on how best to do that or and when not to do that. So we, we're so and typically you're going to see we say use caution when comparing uh, the 2016-2020 ACS five-year estimates with other ACS data or 2020 census data. So use caution, and then why? 
due to data collection challenges in 2020. As a result of COVID, the ACS collected only two thirds of the responses it, use, it usually collects. The re this reduced number of interviews in the 2020 portion of the 2016, 2020 five-year estimates caused an increase in the margins of error by approximately uh, 15 to 20% in relative terms. So you gotta take those margins of error into account, especially when making comparisons for smaller geographic, ge excuse me, geographies or populations. I use caution when using estimates with high margins of error. There's also, I should note, a statistical testing tool uh, that we have available on the ACS site uh, that you are able to utilize um, uh, where you, you can you know, take a look at um, the margins of error. Uh, so in terms of you know, what to do uh, differently, if you're looking at smaller geographies, maybe you have to look at you know, larger geographic areas. If you're looking at uh, detailed Asian groups, maybe you have to look at the Asian group as a whole. So there's probably, you know, some, there's just some uh, in the technical documentation, some, um, some recommendations. However, um, we're saying use caution, okay, because of, because of these, um, these circumstances here. So there are several changes when, compare, when making comparisons uh, with the 2016-2020 ACS, including, so they made changes to the weighting methodology implemented to address the non-response issues in the 2020 census, Actual changes within the population, our ability to capture those changes. Okay, so there you know, were changes. Um, tendency of multi-year estimates to smooth out the sudden changes and the ACS population controls were not informed by the 2020 census results. All right, so, um, and I just wanna say that it, here's some more guidance here on making these comparisons. And in terms of understanding why, that would be a question I would address to the America, uh, American Community Survey uh, Office, so ACSO. Uh, and they, again, can, if, if there's any more information, they might refer you to the technical guidance. Uh, but you know, there is probably an, a deeper explanation on why. So where is that? Uh, the American Community Survey main page. Um, so again, uh, you, know, the, you know, ACS, there's, I'll show you how to get there, but you can just do American Community Survey, just Google it, take, it takes you right you know, to census.gov. And <clears throat> so about the US, about the ACS, here's data, um, geography and the ACS, okay, uh, guidance for data users, um, library methodology, micro data, news and updates. Uh, and, uh, information on operation and administration, technical documentation. Um, I just want to say after all these years with the Census Bureau, we do a great job of giving you the technical documentation. Okay, and, and then 2020 Census release, uh, lots of information here uh, on, about the ACS plus, you know, just in terms of where to, how to contact the ACSO team, <clears throat> you're able to do that as well. Um, so again, and also the data dissemination specialists, if you send them a question, you know, they can go ahead and, you know, contact uh, the ACSO team as well uh, for you, right? So help is available for those that, you know, really need to know um, some, some details as they're working on something specific, you know, and then the more specific you are, the better they can help you. All right, so in terms of products, so, you know, many of the products that you're well familiar with, uh, that you use for your, your ongoing analysis as planners, you know, you're going to see uh, on the American Community Survey 2016-2020. Um, the data profiles, which we'll pull up on data.census.gov, personally, I find very helpful. Uh, and then there's, there's, you know, the five major, the four ma major data tables and it covers the socioeconomic housing demographics of, <clears throat> of, of, of a geographic area. Typically, the ACS tables um, you can find at um, most geographic levels. Comparison profiles. Um, so again, that's when you're able to, so they're really like, um, they're, the demo, they're the data profiles, but they're, uh, they're, they start with uh, CP, so it's a CP2, CP3, CP4, and these um, allow you to see 
compare uh, data, um, by, you know, different data sets. So one of the things we always say is compare non-overlapping data sets. So one of the things is being able to compare the 2011, 2015 to the 2016, 2020, uh, you know, to, uh, to see if indeed there were some changes in it. Typically these comparison profiles, which I like, also will give you an asterisk um, if there was some statistical significance um, between um, those two, those two, that particular variable across those that to that time period. Subject tables start with S. You got 83 of those. Our detailed tables are great, covers every single topic, typically cross-tabulated by race and um, ethnicity. Um, narrative profiles, love them. Um, they have they have already populated those. Uh, a lot of my grant writers love that one because um, you can get that uh, for American Indian and Alaska Native areas. You can also get it for a census track. Uh, very, very good. Uh, and also a zip code. Okay, narrative profiles are great. And then there's uh, in our data tools, of course, our you know, API, Quick Facts, My Tribal Area, Census Business Builder. Typically, all of these, uh, whenever we do an update for the American Community Survey, we go ahead and repopulate. Um, the, we already uh, actually upload, I should say, um, these, this data, the latest data uh, into these great apps um, that people use and find very helpful. Okay, so these are available, lots of data. Always our challenge is to really, is to just zone in on what we're looking for, right? Because I know we can get, I can, I can say and speak for myself, can get overwhelmed with there's so much out there. Uh, so really, I just focus on my one thing, and I'm able to get what I need. And if I can't find it, then I seek um, seek support. So at this point, before I go into data.census.gov, um, are there any questions related to the American Community Survey that I can take at this time? I don't see any in the Q&A box. But if anyone has a question, yeah, happy to happy to field it. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so let's now talk about data.census.gov. So data.census.gov is our, our, our data portal, I kind of might, our latest data extraction tool of, I don't know, was it seven years ago? We had the American Fact Finder. Uh, people love that and didn't love that but now that we have this new one uh it just gets better and better and better so we're starting to love data.census.gov and the way you would access it is on explore data main um or once i actually go into the site because uh, then you're able to just bookmark it uh, once you hit explores data main uh you you're able you go you have to actually to go you have to go to data.census.gov so this will actually take you to the advanced search. However, we all there are they also give you other entry points here, right? They also give you a place to subscribe. So meaning every time there is an update to data.census.gov, once you subscribe, they're gonna they're gonna send you updates. So one of the things they're doing is putting together, I believe it's not it's not monthly, but every at least every quarter. Um, they give you an update on some of the changes that they're making to data.census.gov and it's they're making changes all the time. So what I share with you today, if you go back six months from now, it might be different. So just, just as a warning. So data.census.gov, um, again, this is going to be your entry point and we're going to go live in a second. I just wanted to just kind of give you a big picture for those of you that haven't been on here. Okay, so uh, there's tables, maps, there's pages. <clears throat> pages just gives you a lot of content um, about uh, any particular topic. I rarely go there. It's just, just you know, it's uh, anything related to a specific topic. <clears throat> All right, so there's two ways that you're going to search. They're doing a, a, a really good job with our simple search. So simple search would mean that you would just type something like, um, you know, like a King County, uh, Washington here. Okay, so, and then it will take you, give you some choices in terms of a drop down. Then there's advanced search. Okay, where if I wanted to just go to advanced search and I just wanted to, you know, just go and begin to, you know, start my filtering uh, because I have, um, 
uh, you know, uh, different filters that I want to add, maybe different, um, you know, multiple geographies, different subjects. So, but you can find uh, most answers, you know, starting with the simple search. Um, but, you, but and again, the act, to access complex geographies, you're going to go to advanced search. So again, advanced search is if you're again complex names, you know, all all counties uh, in Washington. Uh, if you're looking for components, geographic components like urban, rural, uh, population groups, you know, different surveys or specific topics, multiple topics, uh, then you're going to go to the advanced search. I want to let you know that in uh, there's uh, what is census.gov. There's frequently asked questions. Uh, this is really good um, because on the left there's how-to materials for using data.census.gov. So pretty much, you know, how to do advanced search, how to filter the tables, you know, how to download a table. Uh, it's you know different uh, how to map. Okay, so it, it gives you some how-to materials for the API, microdata, right? So, you know, video tutorials, webinars. So just wanting you to know, then it's frequently asked questions. Okay, and then um, often on this um, frequently asked questions, we also give you like what data has been populated on data.census.gov because they keep adding. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, you know, go into some examples, all right? So today um, we're going to use... Um, I'm going to use simple search to find the home ownership rate uh, for the state of Washington, pull up the latest profiles for selected counties in your state, access the selected population profile for a detailed race group uh, for counties in your service area, pull zip does in a county to find the median household income, and how many grocery stores are in King County, Washington. All right, so those are going to be um, our, 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 our demo uh, questions here. Does anybody um, have any more questions before I, I'm going to try to go live here? So I'm going to minimize my screen here and see if I can get back to. Hmm. So I'm going to escape here. Hopefully I'm getting out. If I didn't lose you guys. All right. Are you still there? Yes, I'm sharing my screen. All right. You're sharing your screen. Okay, minimize here, gonna stay here. Okay, new tab to the right. I don't see any questions in the, the Q&A box right now, but I'll let you know if anything pops up. Okay, very good, thank you. All right, so let's go, all right. So this is, you know, my, my screen. Um, I'm going to just start with, and again, I tend to bookmark things I need up here, glossary, geocoder, explore census main, but let's go to the census.gov. I'm going to start here because you never, never can find it. So it's going. Okay. So um, as I pointed out, you know, just you guys, one of the things, my biggest tip is I still use the global search. So remember when I shared that if I wanted to go to, um, you know, disclosure avoidance, I could type that here. If I wanted to do race and ethnicity, I could type that here. If I wanted poverty, I could type that here. Global search is not a bad place to start because um, typically going through um, our different layers, they change things and move things, okay? So again, but browse by topics, this is where you would have to find geography, for example. So if you're looking for, you know, Tiger Web or any of the geography tools, you have to really go here. This is where in the sense of the geocoders here, other, other tools. Uh, population estimates. So browse by topic, take a look at that. Population estimates is here. Redistricting, voting age, race, okay? So that's not bad. Explore data main. You can go here. Here's where Census Academy is. We have added a lot of tools, which we'll go through on, the, on June 22nd on data equity tools. Other data tools and apps, experimental data products, because even though we did a one-year ACS experimental data product, actually the household pulse survey uh, is an experimental data product, all right? Visualizations, training workshops, table, here's our library, put on library. Infographics, facts, shapes. Another place I go, I wanna show you where, here's, here's your surveys. If I wanted to go to the 2020 census, census results, ACS, American business, um, annual business survey, pull up um, minority business data. 
okay? Um, there, economic census, SAPI, okay? And then information for media. So this is where you would go to, to subscribe. If you don't know already, you would go here to subscribe and it's gonna just point it out to you. Sorry, it might be a little slow. Okay, you can go here, where does it say subs subscription request? You go here, put your email in, and then and it has a drop down box on everything you wanna subscribe to. ACA, ACS updates, 2020 updates, disclosure avoidance, economic census, so forth and so on. Okay, so that's how you would subscribe. And that's a good way to get information um, just kind of, you know, fed to you uh, so that you don't have to remember, um, um, you know, what's been updated. So I, I, so I get that sent to actually my personal email too. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and explore data. I'm going to go to explore data main. So now we're going to go into our exercises. Okay. So as I mentioned, I'm going to have to minimize this. <clears throat> so our first exercise is we're going to use simple search to find the home ownership rate for the state of Washington. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to data.census.gov. So type in your area of interest. So one of the things that they that we continue to improve upon uh, is our what we call the geographic profiles. I'm going to have to access my um, my board here. So Washington. So when you see this bold, uh, the Washington in bold print, this is the this is your geographic profile, but you see it gives you other options, okay, you, if you needed to go to a specific city, all right, so I'm going to just hit our, our geographic profile, um, hopefully many of you know about this, they, they do continue to improve it, um, so one of the things you'll see are some, you know, some, some key statistics right at the top, okay, <clears throat> median household income, bachelor's degree or higher, employment rate, uh, without health care coverage, um, you're going to get some business data, total employer establishments, total households, Hispanic or Latino of any race. Here you can also, and it's, instead of scrolling down, you can also get to um, any of, because it's, it's pretty wide, you see all the different topics it has on here. Um, I can just go ahead and type in, I'm interested in what? Okay, I said I needed to know home ownership rate. So I'm just going to go to housing. Okay, so here it is right here. So this wasn't here about a year ago because I would have people call me all the time wanting to get the home ownership rate. So home ownership rate in Washington is 63.3%. They're also going to give you housing values in Washington. Okay, right here. And it also gives you the source, DP04, or demographic profile 04. And what and it's going to give you what? The latest American community survey. Um, that's just pulling the data from. So this is the 2020 uh, American Community Survey five-year estimates. So this wasn't here a while back. I would actually have to go and go to DP04 uh, to get the home ownership rate. So just to say that this continues to get improved, you might want to go here first uh, to see if you know you're going to be able to get data that you want. Okay, business and economy data, right? Okay, so just to say that that's, that's pretty simple, you know, you could utilize um, your, your profile uh, to get a lot of data, you know, quickly. So I, you know, go there first. Now, now we want to, I'm going to pull up the latest data profiles for selected counties uh, in your state. Here, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to start with the single search because I'm going to have multiple counties. So now we're going to use the filter. So I'm going to go into advanced search. Typically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose my geography first. That's what I do. Uh, some people can, they may go by year. That's going to be, these are very, it's very limited and go by year, but you can. So that this the 2020 census shows up, for example. Um, I can go by survey and just say, I just want, you know, American community survey data. 
okay, um, or decennial. But in this, for this example, we're just gonna we're gonna choose our geography. So it's going to the first thing I'm going to do is I I'm going I want to know county, right? So this is a typical you know what we call it nesting relationship. I'm gonna um, you know counties fall under the state, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose Washington. And now in this case, if I wanted, I was doing an analysis of all counties within Washington, I would select all counties within Washington. But since I'm just put, wanting to pull up profiles uh, in the Puget Sound uh, Regional Council area, I'm gonna go ahead and make my selection here. So King, and there's no quick way to do this, but to actually go down this list. Um, so King, Kits, Kitsap. Snomish and Pierce, right? PP. Pierce. Okay, four. And okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and choose at this point um, my, I'm going to choose um, surveys. So now I'm going to nar narrow my search. Okay, so, but, and you also see here in filters, I have my four uh, filter. Uh, geographies of interest. So that's great. So that verifies it for me. Uh, again, these are, you know, other data sets I could be interested in. But for American Community Survey, it's going to ask me, do I want the one year supplemental? I want the five, I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just choose the five year. <clears throat> and I want data profiles. And I'm going to go down to my right hand corner here and select search. All right, and here's my four, my four tables. Okay. <clears throat> so again, you know, you can again when if I pull up um, view all four tables. So you go ahead and select the one you want to view first. All right. All right, so again, we see King County. Um, if I wanted to get rid of margin severe, so I can just see a little bit, but you're gonna get estimates and percents with your profiles. So and then again, you know, you could review them. Most of you are familiar with the selected population um, profiles, excuse me, select the demographic profiles. I tend to use this for um, when I'm, when I'm, you know, just when I had this exam, just work out my plan for my, my areas of, um, responsibility just to you know, get a profile for my areas um, but again you're going to be able to you know get a lot of information but i want to show you here how i can download all tables and just note here remember see it shows all tables so what if i wanted to get other years i can do that too all right so I can go ahead and we're just, you know, in this case, we're just going to do this. So you can, uh, one thing about downloading in your zip file, you can choose other years. So say I wanted to, you know, look at the, um, compare, you know, the data profiles from the 2016, 2020 to the 2015, uh, 2011, 2015, five year. Okay. I can just download all of those at once into my um, comma delimited file. Okay, and that's what you should download into a comma delimited file. All right, so that's how you can get all tables. I won't, I'm not going to do that uh, because the computer is a little slow, but that's how you can grab everything, you know, and then you would just go ahead. It's pretty, pretty a lot of information, but you can go ahead and download it. All right, that's how you would get all of your tables. And if I wanted to do a comparison with both, and you could do the same with the comparison profiles. Um, <clears throat> okay, again, there's many ways we can go. So. That's how you pull up the latest data profiles for your state, and you can pull up any historical ones uh, that you may be interested in. So uh, that was our first search. So I'm going to go back to clear your slate. You, you literally, you can't say clear all. It seems like it holds on to the data. So go back to clear, just to clear your cache right here. It's just taking it all the way back. Okay, so you guys, um, you know, sometimes, it depends on what you're working on, but you may you want. So our second example is to access a selected population profile. 
uh, for the detailed Asian group Chinese alone for selected counties in Washington. So this, the selected population profile is SO201. So again, this is gonna allow us to search by race and ethnicity. Okay, so this is an example of how we will search by race and ethnicity. So I went to advanced search because it's a little bit more layered and complex, right? And I'm going to choose under topics, race and ethnicity. And um, when you see these folders, it means that there's more information there. Uh, when it's just a box, like if I did race and ethnicity, it would really it be inclusive of all race groups. And it's primarily the major basic race groups and they're gonna be uh, particular tables um, for making this selection. But if I wanted to, I'm looking for a specific here. I'm looking for a specific uh, detailed Asian alone group, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to detailed Asian. Detailed Asian alone. So these are just individuals that says, in this case, I'm Chinese. So the code is 016. I'm Chinese alone. I could have selected the Chinese alone or in combination. Those numbers tend to be bigger. And this is anyone that says I'm, you know, Chinese and Korean, or I'm Chinese and white, or Chinese and Afri Black, or Chinese and Indian, so forth and so on. But I want Chinese alone. Uh, so now I selected, so it's Chinese alone is now showing here. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose my geography. So the limiting characteristic here may have been race. So one of the stipulations on the selected population profile is that the group has to be large enough. Okay, the selected population profiles, these particular selected population profiles are one year only. And um, there will be some selected population profiles for detailed groups, detailed race groups and Hispanic groups. That's in April, 2023. Those are great. I get many groups that really wanna do a, you know, a particular drill down on a detailed group. Okay, so, so geography here. So I'm gonna go, get, go ahead and do my, do my layer here. And I'm just going to this case. Um, King and Snomish. Okay, so you got to, you know, so counties fall under states. I'm going to go ahead and choose Washington and all counties in Washington. So King County and you know, these counties are big enough. All right. So then I'm going to, so I got my race group and I got two counties. Uh, and I'm um, just, so in this case, I'm not going to choose a particular survey. Let me just see what comes up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead on my left hand corner, my right hand corner, excuse me, and hit um, search. So again, I'm going to see my, my selected population profile. And you see a lot of the B tables, a lot of the B tables. These are the detailed tables. Um, but I'm going to select population profiles. And let's see what shows up here. Okay. It's taking just a second. All right. So for, okay. So in this case, um, only, um, only King County showed up. So if I look at King County, so this would be in King County, a selected population profile specific to the uh, Chinese alone. Um, so again, people reporting Chinese alone. Uh, in King County are 126,000. Okay, and then they break down um, this 126,000 by male, female, by age group, uh, and then some other selected variables, school enrollment, education attainment. So they're like a demographic profile, but specific to a detailed uh, race, race group. So you can do this for any of the race groups, ancestry groups, so forth and so on. Selected population profile, you're only going to be able to get one year. When the 20, in April 2023, uh, you should be able to get, um, you know, um, get to get more of uh, more of the detailed groups. All right. Um, okay, so that's that's how we pulled up. We're going to go back to um, clear my cache here. I can go ahead and download it. 
And now let's look at zip codes. Let's look at how we pull up zip codes. It's a unique way to pull up zip codes, all right? So same thing, advanced search. And let me know if I'm going too fast. I'm going to hit geography. And so here, these are the most commonly used geographies. You can see here that they're, you know, some summary levels. So this is for, these are, my goodness. So this is if you, if you, if you can't find the most requested summary levels, there's some other summary levels here. Okay, quite a bit. But we're gonna stay here and I'm going to go and I'm looking for, zip does right zip code tabulation areas these are approximations of zip codes um, started a number of years ago so they they zip, zip, our zip does are great approximations for zip codes uh, and over the years we probably pretty much approximates uh, our zip, the zip codes uh, that the um, u.s postal service utilizes really for their roots okay so, um, okay, so I have, I have Zictas here. Now, this, this is a piece of work to get all your Zictas. A couple of ways you, could, you can do all Zictas and maybe try to map into your specific Zicta, but they have given us a search function. They have made this improvement. This was available like eight months ago, but uh, now we have to use this search box here. If you know, if you know census tracts, you could do that too. Um, but otherwise, you're, you're, you have to go through that long list and be patient. Uh, so I'm going to get, um, so I'm going to get the Bothell zip code. So it's so okay. And you and you want to get, okay, I believe it's this one here. Okay. All right. So that adds in there. So then, all right, so I'm going to use that out. And then I'm going to add the other zip code. So if you know your zip codes, you can narrow you can narrow your search that way. So the search box does work. Uh, it takes a little time, but I was at one point. Um, okay, good. This is, okay, what did I do? 98020. Okay, I did that. 98020. All right. Am I not seeing? <laughs> just, just, just get two one. Hmm. All right. I need a two one nine eight one two. I got that already. Uh, nine eight oh three six. It's it's a little it's it's a little slow. Okay. Nine. Eight. Oh, three, six. All right. Let it populate. We're just going to get three. Come on. All right. Let's just go with those three. And all right. So we got, I have my three Zictas here. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead. And then I'm going to now go into topics. I want to determine the median income uh, for a service area, for my service area, right? So that's my, that's my task here. So now I want to know about income, right? So income and poverty is pretty clear. I'm going to open the folder and then I'm going to go ahead and select on income. Median income. Search. I notice income and poverty. Okay, so then um, the table that I'm looking for is 1903. You could find it in 1901 too, but this, this you see here is really clear median income. In the other way, of course, you know, so you, you could go ahead and so median income dollars. Okay, so. So take out margin of error just to clean it up. So we have the, the three Zictas here, right? And we have median income in dollars for Zicta 9812, 118, and okay, 129. 
and 82, respectively, 98036. Uh, so of course, you know, here I could go back, I can add all zip codes, you know, you, you could go ahead and, I mean, this, you know, for to, to map, you have to have at least two. Um, so it's just going to map my specific two zip codes, okay, with that particular variable. Okay, so, um, yeah. And then so it's just giving me my, my range here. It's income by race. You got to change the variable. And you should, we should be able to get median income. But that's, but you can do this. Let's see. Median income, I just want median, straight up median income, median income and median income. Mm -hmm. Well, median and mean, median income by race and Hispanic origin by household. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this one guys. I don't wanna waste too much more time. Okay. So this is my range, median income by race and his, um, ethnicity. Okay, so it doesn't give us a lot of variation. You know, you could change the color classes, probably could use a little, little more, you know, change. It's just pretty, pretty similar here. Um, and when, since we're doing three zip codes, two, two are uh, in one range, 82,000 to 129,000, and one is in 82,000 into, you know, one is in eight, is at 82,000. And that's, you know, this one here. But you could, you know, again, one other way to do that is do all zip codes. Um, and then at that point, you'll see all of Washington. And then you're able to, or, you, or, you know, or all census tracts, and you're able to get more, you know, granularity. Now, the thing on this, on this map is, you know, they don't allow you to um, save it. I mean, there's no, and you could print it out and control P. Uh, you can, but one of the things I do is I just save my my link here. Uh, you can send it to someone, um, or you know, or download it to a uh, to a uh, um, you know Word Word doc or however where you want to save it, where you can find it, you know, later, and then it can repopulate it, and you can build on your search. Okay, but this is this you know really specific. I you know I did this for a group that. You know they were looking for you know this in this case they were looking at um you know some the changes between two different two different periods of time with the demographics of an area so you can map here you can also go here and change and go to another year okay you can you can change year on your map okay so again different things you could do and I, you, and you, you know you can't download it and compare it um this particular does this map doesn't allow you to do that? Census Business Builder does have that aptitude. Um, next on June twenty second, there are some some downloadable um, maps um, uh, that they have put from the American Community Survey. Don't know if they populated the latest vintage now, but anyway, it's pulling the twenty seventeen now. Um, you know, I'll see a different, maybe a different coloration. Um, it may take a little while. It's like it's in a loop here. But let's, I'm just going to go ahead for the sake of time and um, clear my cache. But you can go ahead and change years, um, you know, clear geography, start back over. Um, you can look at your, your table. So this would be a table view. So if it allows me to see the table, here's the table here. Okay. Um, then you could download that, you know, cut and paste into your Excel doc. You can go back to my full table. So it was just, it was just clear. It was just, I didn't have patience, but it was going to go ahead and give me my map. But uh, so now what we were looking at 2017. Okay. So it's, it's, it's really gotten a lot better. Um, I'm, I'm loving it a lot more. Um, but again, that's how you would basically do Zikdas. Again, you can do all Zikdas and map and then kind of, you know, isolate if you know where the Zikdas are, um, or you can just get it's just the specificity you want by using this search button, search function. All right. I find that helpful if I'm looking at a particular service area. Let's go ahead and clear our cache and start with my next exercise. All right. How many grocery stores um, are in King County, Washington? All right. So again, you know, we're, we're going, I'm, a, I, I'm doing, I use Van, uh, there's, there's an, is an example 
uh, on the on the handout on the exercises, but they did a search here. You can you can say grocery stores Washington. You can try that. But I'm going to use advanced search. I feel like I have more control over where I want to go personally. Okay, so I'm going to hit um, geography. So again, um, so I so it's, it is going to force me to to do the the, the narrowed approach, right? And I don't know how the search box works for that. It could. Um, I just use it right now for the zip codes. Um, for, for this example, so I want King County, right? I just want one county. And, um, and then I'll show you how you can add county. So now we have our geography here. And then um, I'm going to go into, so a couple ways I can do this. I can. Um, I can use my search box here and say grocery stores. Not okay, gross if I can spell it. Grocery. Okay, so you see, I'm going to just use the two digit. Four, excuse me, four digit. Okay, and on for this case, I want to use county business patterns. Uh, so that's CB two zero 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 CPB. So we could see there's um, in King County, look at the general. And so they have it under, um, you can look at uh, uh, by in, uh, number of persons employed. So I'm just going to, the larger number of course is um, the num total number of establishments. And you could see annual payroll, first quarter payroll, number of employees uh, in the uh, gross, in, in under grocery, the grocery stores. Now, what if I wanted to add, you know, geographies at this point? So one of the things I could do, you could add geography. So I would go to, I believe it's geo. Okay, so again, I'm looking for county. So it's gonna, it has to go through that whole layered approach. Or I could have added it all begin, but I was, but my, my um, assignment was just to find, you know, King County. But what if I was wanted to add, you know, you know the, the counties in, in Pierce County? Area. So Pierce kind of kiss up. Pierce. Yeah, Snowmish. So you can always add counties, very flexible. Okay, so they show up here in my filters as well as grocery store, right? And now um, it's going to, it's using the same table. Okay, so now. That's a little bit more whirly, but for King County is 647, um, for Kissap is 61, uh, Pierce County is 230, and Snomish is 200, 206. Okay, so that, and then again, how you would, you could download in Excel. You go, okay, and it's actually gonna download. Okay, so you can go ahead and download it. I'm, I'm not gonna do that, but you guys know how to download in Excel or download in a CSV file. Um, so the advantages of a CSV file, of course, is you're now able to um, select more than one year. So the county business patterns, the latest is 2020. Um, so at least I think it's an annual, it's an annual survey. All right, um, okay, so now, um, Let's go ahead and clear our cache so I could download it. You know, so that's how you would find grocery stores. Now, how about non-employer? Okay, so Census Bureau county business patterns are in employer-based establishments, and non-employer are you know um, are, are basically you know like sole proprietorships, people that don't have there's a small business, they don't have uh, employees. So uh, in King County, there's a number of non-employer 148. Uh, Kissap is 18, Pierce is 53, and uh, Snomish is 53. All right. So that's how you can you would gather you know some of the business data. This non-employers county business patterns. Uh, there's also the an annual business survey, which you know gives you some data um, for for businesses by race and ethnicity. 
that's, those are the, those in terms of looking at business, um, um, looking at some some basic business data. So I'm gonna clear my clear my filter here, and come back here. And so um, those were the the exercises I I have for you. Um, I guess at this point, um, are there are there any questions that I can take um, that you may have? Yeah, there are a couple in the, the Q&A box. I'll start with uh, the second one since it's asking about data specifically. Yeah. Um, they're asking about the availability of um, data on populations with limited English proficiency mm -hmm. um, and whether that's available at uh, various geographic levels. So mm -hmm. state, county, city, tract, block group, et cetera. Absolutely. That's a, that's a very... Um... That's a very uh, popular one. So that was actually one of my examples. But so yeah, I get that one quite a bit. Um, you know, a lot of service businesses need to, um, um, you know, community centers. I'm sorry. The, the you know the I had, I had a museum that wanted to to look at you know that particular um, um, variable as well. So again. Um, I can, you know, so you could start off uh, in terms of what what geographies we may be interested in. Um, mm -hmm. So let's, I can see, maybe we could just do something like, um, I'm going to, it's just a big file. Um, so the thing about, um, I was thinking about census tracts, but that would, it's a big file to look at, but we can map it. Um, okay, so basically how I would find that though. Okay, so the limiting uh, variable would be topic. And when we look at language or ancestry, okay, or foreign born, um, you know, if you look at, oh my goodness, what category would that be? Populations and people, believe it or not. All right, so populations and people is a pretty good catch all. You know, so we have ancestry, computer use, uh, counts, estimates, and projections. Those are, those are um, projections, pop, pop, pop estimates or pop population projections, language spoken at home. Okay, so that's just the one box, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So language spoken at home. So now what tables are gonna be here? Let's just see. So the main the main table, then I, then I will try to drill down to some smaller populations, but this is, so this is gonna actually be, um, okay, so language spoken at home. Now, so this is the subject table. So this one is going to, you know, really just give you, um, you know, so when we think about limited English speaking households, we want, you know, so we have speak English only well, but we want to speak English less than very well. So that would be your population of interest, you know, speak English less than very well, percent English less than very well. Okay, so um, for this table, subject table, you're going to get these uh, categories of Spanish, other Indo-European language, Asian Pacific Islander language, uh, other languages. Okay, so that's, so I know that that doesn't give you um, the detail, you know, that you want, but subject table is pretty much available for a lot of geographic areas. This one is the one you want, the B16001. However, typically I'm finding that at the county level only. Okay, so you're almost relegated to um, the, the, sub, the, the, the four different cate broad categories. This one is available um, at the county level. So let me, we'll, we'll try to put in a population. This is, computer is working, it's a little bit slow today, but it's populating. See, and I'm see this should default to the US. This shouldn't be any problem at all. I see it's going. See how it's kind of graying out. So let me let it complete its course. So this is a great table. So I'm just wanting to give you like sometimes I look at the general table and say, hi, is this what I want? Yeah. So the B16001 is great um, because it's it's giving you the data you want by some specific language groups. Okay, so this is the specificity here. Okay, that we that we sometimes we don't get typically below the county level. 
This table used to be available at smaller levels, um, maybe because of confidentiality protections. I don't see it beyond, below a county level, but this one gives you your specificity. You see that a lot of people want. Otherwise, we're going to have just those broad levels, those kind of the Asian, other Indo, Spanish, and then there was the other one. Um, now, so again, so let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose geography. Let's go county. And let's see. So county, I know it's there. Okay. So again, let me just try, let's try to do county. We can, this is, I'm just going to do king. Okay. Just for you know, our sake of time here in Washington. Okay. Let's just look for king, king, king. Here we go. The king should definitely, that data should be available. Uh, only because, so again, see your tables here. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to, so, you know, let me move over here. Okay, so it's going to, you know, default to 1601 for King County. Okay, so how about some other tables? How about the other tables? Can I get the other table? So B1601 is there. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I don't see B1601. Okay, but I can see B1603. See again, English, Spanish, other Indo. Okay, um, total population 116. Um, okay, so in terms of just the age by language spoken at home for the population five years and over in limited speaking, the English speaking households. So you can get total number of households, households that speak only English, um, speak other languages, you can get that data, but you see B16001, it's not here. So even at this county level, so the numbers are too small. See the numbers, the numbers aren't large enough. So you can get, so again, um, you know, so you can all, you can get, so you can get the, you know, so this is just B16002, which is just limited English speaking households, does it? Have, okay. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, but you still can get the B1601. Take out margins of error. So that's the stipulation. Um, there are some, you know, population thresholds, I believe, for getting B1601. I'm able to, so how about Washington State? Okay, let me, just, let me look at state. So I'm gonna take out King County and I'm going to now see if I can just get Washington. Let me see if I can do it. See if it will understand what I'm saying here if I just do it this way. Washington. Washington. Okay. Yep. Okay, so let's go to geography. Um, I just want county. I want state. Let's just choose Washington, right? So Washington should be big enough. Let's see. So the state, I bet you 16. B16001 will show up. Okay, 1601 shows up, the 1602 shows up. So these are those broad carry. Yep, you can get you can get it for the state. So yeah, this is surprise. So this, so again, um, in my experience, this B16001 is the only one that gives that level of detail. And um, so again, you know, we look at Spanish. Um, so Spanish, that's that's uh, that's a pretty good number. You should you might be able to find Spanish. So sometimes I go I go large, um, just to see the the population thresholds. Okay, how how how, how much of a population speaks that language? So less than very well is two hundred thirty five thousand. That is large enough. So typically, um, the smaller counties, smaller numbers, um, you're not going to be able to capture like Haitian. Italian, German, you know, these are smaller numbers. Um, Polish, okay. Um, Ukrainian, 30,000. Or other Slavic languages, Armenian, Girardi, Girardi. Okay. So again, look at the numbers. Um, you know, then, you know, you. Uh, so we were able to get it. So, you know, I know King County is the largest county. Um, you know, you can do a search, you can add, do all counties and, and see what shows up. But, you know, so you can get it for the state. Um, but yeah, so if I, if it's not showing up by the county, um, for one of the largest counties that would probably be likely to have, um, you know, a larger number, 
then I don't know if it was just not more than likely won't show up for the smaller geographic areas. But 1601 will, you will be able to get the larger numbers, you, you know, you will be able to get for the state of Washington, some of these broad categories, and you can see the numbers uh, that are in the state. Um, but in terms of pulling that table, and so that that was that's been a big change uh, with with subsequent you know um, data on languages. This particular table, um, I believe, probably for confidentiality um, reasons. Okay, I hope that answered your question. I was really long winded, um, but yeah. And of course, you are always welcome to contact us. You know that that census.as data that census.gov. You know, some, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, there could be changes. You might want to look at the, um, <clears throat> so right now, I think you're, you're relegated to probably the, uh, the 6B, 60B, the S1601, S1603. Um, but of course, you know, you're able to ask the question again, uh, just for verification purposes, but that's been my experience. Okay, but go large and then kind of narrow. All right. Any other questions? Yes, I do see one more in the chat. Um, they are asking if we should assume that the 2025 year ACS has uh, a 15 to 20 percent margin of error. That's um, that's that's what the slides. That's what they're saying. Um, you know, that's what they're saying. You. Um, it's it sounds like that's 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 that's, ha that, that's what happened because of the waiting and all, all the changes they made that that's but that's what they're still finding that's the only way that they were able to mitigate the non-response bias so they did try to do um and now don't ask me what this means the entropy balance waiting it, it, you know into their standard production uh, production methodology um but again that's that's what on the on the most part that's what they're finding. Okay, so you you can't you you can you you should assume that um, you know they said you know you know yeah look at your margins of error uh, you know if you really got to use that particular data variable then maybe what I would do and I've I've seen people do this is just you would just send to get an email um, out to the the uh, ACSO team and then ask them what their thoughts are on that particular data variable. And they may just point you to methodology and technical documentation, um, but that's, that's, that's what they've been finding according to, um, you know, their, their, their release notes based on the technical documentation. But you can always ask and verify for sure. Okay, sometimes, sometimes the more specific, you're looking for something specific, this particular data variable, um you know how how you know how how safe is it is to use this particular data point do you have other suggestions all right that's what i would recommend you uh anything else we have a few more minutes five more minutes um leah this is carol um i'm okay. just gonna ask a, a quick clarification regarding um the last question that was asked and yeah my my read of that slide is that the Bureau is saying that it's not that all margins of error are 15 to 20% around the estimate itself. It's that compared to previous vintages, any one given estimate could have a margin of error that may be up to 15 to 20% larger than older vintages. Is, is that the right read? Okay, that is, that is the right read. Didn't have that in, in front of me, but let's so, um, but again, um, you know, the, the key, Carol, is to, you know, they're, they're, they are saying to use caution. Uh, and if you are finding higher levels of margin, um, then the, the recommendation is to use statistical testing. Great. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. Up to. That's right. Okay. Any other questions? Just uh, looks like a comment yeah. came through, um, you know, with appreciation for for walking through all those, uh, you know, various um, language tables and 
um, you know, just and, and also a little bit of disappointment that, you know, um, that, that there isn't more detailed uh, data available in certain circumstances, yeah. um, which is which is understandable. Um, I think a lot of our uh, folks in our audience are coming from, um, you know, sort of cities um, and towns and, you know, uh, local planning jurisdictions where um, they they are likely dealing with, you know, larger margins of error and, and, and some more data. Yeah. You know, limitations on data availability because of the of the geography that they're they're working with um so um, i wonder if you might have any suggestions along those lines about um you know perhaps you know um also looking at data for broader geographies like for the county that you're you know that your jurisdiction is located within and yep. Uh, maybe triangulating between data for the county and data for your um your for, for your particular jurisdiction mm -hmm. those are those are all um good recommendations carol uh yeah so um and i just remember we used to we used to have a you know a slide that just said yeah just like i mentioned it's um you know the kind of the workaround is if you you know if you're looking at a, a specific geog um particular detailed group and the margins of error are too high or, or the data is non-existent then you have to go up to the broader group okay so you, you have you do have to go up um one up 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 to so go to the like so if i use the example again if i'm looking at um you know detailed korean and um i'm not finding my numbers then perhaps i have to look at asian and that you know that, that that's that so that is i know i know that is a that is a, that is a challenge and i know there's a call from it is some many um, advocacy groups that looking at you know just having more disaggregated data available that was part of our listening session last week again census bureau has to bridge privacy and confidentiality uh you know with these smaller geographies so 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 population groups and the other one as i recall was you know really to to boost up uh to go up to go up um you know if you can't if you can't do you know place level you have to go up to the county level and like you were saying, using the triangulation approach, I um, and again, short of that, um, you know, what I do even now, if I if I have a specific questions in terms of how to, um, you know, if, if I'm finding I'm running into a brick wall with finding what I need, um, I do send an email. You know, again, you can do the census.as data and ask the question, uh, and then you know we will pursue it. You know, with the ACSO team to see if they have any other recommendations. You know, for you. So I wouldn't rule it out. Just again, you, you can push to like this. So this is all I got. So this is what I have to work with. Um, is you know, because sometimes there's been a table I've been able to find. You know that they or they've been able to find for me that I just couldn't find. So, you know, don't rule it out, but yeah, you do, that's, that, that's been the historical recommendation um, <clears throat> as you, you know, you have to, um, you know, just to go up a geography or to use the broad, uh, the broad group uh, as, as one. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Okay. Then there's, there was one other method, but I can't recall what that was in the past. Good well, questions, but you, yeah, good questions. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you to thank you to the audience and thank you so much, Leah. You walked us through um, a huge amount of information and content. Um, I hope all the participants leave the webinar today feeling, um, you know, uh, uh, really like you've you've gained, um, you know, uh, knowledge as a as a consumer of census data resources, um, both in terms of some, you know, some of the most commonly used um, data programs and, and, and data products uh, that the Census Bureau releases, um, some knowledge about the, um, the data reliability issues associated with the most recent vintages of the decennial census, as well as um, uh, ACS, and um, being, you know, sort of a little bit, you know, sort of more informed about how to pull these data um, yourself from uh, through their data, data portal. Um, and uh, thank you, Leah, for pointing um, the audience to so many resources um, in terms of um, folks and, and pages that they can turn to for, for assistance and, um, and more information. Um, uh, it was, uh, I, I will, uh, one plug for the upcoming webinar that we have two weeks from today, 
uh, on Wednesday, June the 22nd. That webinar will um, cover a, another sort of round of really, uh, really fascinating um, Census Bureau resources. Um, Leah will be introducing folks to um, what they what the Census Bureau calls their COVID hub. So just a hub of informational resources related to the pandemic uh, and its impact on our communities. Um, she's also going to be covering a lot of um, uh, equity related data resources and tools um, that I think could be really useful as we as planners really try and sort of bring equity into you know, our approach to our work. Uh, and then Craig Hellman, Director of Data at PSRC, is going to be um, uh, going over a new uh, data dashboard that PSRC is launching called Community Profiles, which brings together both census data together with other sort of local data sources to provide really interesting and um, sort of a, a visual um, you know, sort of dashboard of uh, interesting data statistics for local communities. So we hope you can join us next Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, and staying on a couple of extra minutes. Thank you, Leah, Eric, and Kristen. Thank you. It's been, it's been my pleasure. Thank you all. Have a great week. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.